Freestyle King. You know why? He's rhyming off my old oh, rhyme book. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, we're here with Leo, the legendary Freestyle King. Leo, uh, tell me something about jujitsu. Tell me something important about jujitsu. Um, you should do it as often as you can. Yeah. Uh, use your mind, your body, and soul. Yes, yes. And what, what, uh, what should they do for our YouTube channel? Well, yeah. you should definitely like, yeah. share, subscribe, yeah. and rewatch because uh, yeah. you know you didn't get the first time. No, there's a lot of details in there. What's the name of the channel? Uh, Happy Pill. That's right. Happy Pill Project. Leo, like, share, subscribe. Uh, we had been working all these arm drags, but what today I want to do is we could do a couple of, uh, of submissions. One's a guillotine and one's an anaconda roll to an Olymp- to, um, to, uh, an an- uh, Olympic roll to an anaconda. So we had been pushing these hands down and then shooting this in the pocket and then pulling him forward like this. And then off of last week, we were taking this hand and grabbing onto his lat. And why I explained about grabbing onto his lat was that I understood his recovery was to reset his head to this side. And now I just reached this lat and I realized this guy's resetting his head and he's dropping it. But there's something going on down here. When I first pulled him through, Right there's uh, one of the things. Let me just backtrack a second. On Friday, when I told you earlier, I pushed this through like this, right? And he was resetting his head, right, like this. But just remember where this hand is right now. It's on this side of my hip line. So in Friday's class, what I explained was that I was going to drop this as he was resetting his head, and instead of reaching here, I was going to make this Y wedge, take this leg out, and then shoot across. So I got rid of the head, right? So we're gonna do a different variation. So this time when I pulled him, you have to read the situation. This is how I always tell you guys that the game changes in three to four inches. Where's his hand? Where's his head? Where's his shoulder? So many different variations of moves. So you come here and you push this down and now I go pull hard and this hand's sitting in between my groin area and I'm trying to reach over the back and he's resetting the skull. And I go, damn. He's going to get away from me, and I can't make this turn because when I go Y wedge, this hand is here. And then I go Y wedge, it, and it's getting stuck in between, and he's recovering, okay? So I told you we were going to flip this grip. Instead of worrying about this grip, and as he's resetting the head, I drop that grip, and I overlace with this hand. That allows me to free this hand up. And what we did in the last class on Saturday was because I freed this hand up and I realized he's resetting his head, I cupped his skull and I brought myself underneath him. So I go supine and I dig myself underneath because really what I want him is on top of me. He's got the issue that that hand stuck and he wants to pull it out, but I grabbed onto the back of his skull so that he can't pull it out and I'm pulling him down. So the only thing I wanted to do was slide myself underneath. One of the things that I emphasized was that there should be some form of connection of your insteps on his inner thighs because I want to be able to slide in and out off of him, okay? So if we've done everything right, we've shot through, we've pulled hard, and I'm trying to reach and he's resetting, I go, oh boy. So I drop that grip and I over scoop and I keep this grip. Now I've grabbed onto his skull and I'm trying to get him on top of me. So I slide myself underneath and now Ethan becomes very light. When we come over, there's some things that we're gonna go through now. As we're driving over and coming over, I'm gonna turn and come to this point. Some people, when you're dumping them over, they're laying on their back. That's not realistic. Because if I think about what this was really occurring, I'm fighting tooth and nail to get you over in a competition or just in rolling because I wanna be dominant top player. So you're not going to tell me you're going to flip him and he's going to land on his back. That's ridiculous. And if you were the bottom player, you should have been fighting to keep turning because now you're just going to go to your back from here and you're going to allow me to have four points like this or just start wailing on your head. No way. I don't care what situation it is. I don't care if it's BJJ, IBJJ, MMA. I don't care what it is. You do not lay down and have a man on top of you like that looking down at you. So you don't stop turning. So when we landed, my hand was like this. Okay, let's turn this a little bit this way, right? My hand was like this. This hand doesn't have a purpose yet because I would have loved to have been on the inside, but it could have some purpose. If you're long enough, right, you can tell me you're going to go to Doris. We'll go through that in a second. When I first landed, this leg should have been butterflying. 
So when we first landed, it should have ended up like this. Okay, so come back one second on the return. So you understand what I'm saying at this point. We had pushed this down, I hooked it, I dropped it. And when I land, I'm here and going. I just got over right now, and now that butterfly is there, and I'm holding the position. Now that I have, I have, Cynthia brought it up just before. I, I understand like the mechanics of your turns. So I want to keep this cross diagonal pin like this. So the four things that enable you to keep going on the turn are this hip rotating, this hip rotating, this shoulder rotating, the elbow retracting. I've taken command of all four of them. So let's turn this this way. So this is what I mean by it. When I first came over, my hand was like this, okay? So I dropped my body line in front of the shoulder. Now let's talk about the lower half. I've taken command of this, this hip line with my kneecap. I have a butterfly super tight. My blade isn't going across. So I'm stopping your rotation from coming up. I don't mind if you lay back down. That's awesome. You want to turn away? You want to give me your back? You really don't know what you're doing then. Okay, so you are always coming this way, unless you have no clue of what you're doing. Then you're going to lay down and go, okay, this is just awful. So now I've come through here, and I've dropped my body line. I have a free hand. So I'm fighting to either pull this elbow up, or if he gave me the opportunity early, I could just scoop the elbow early. So now I have all four locations, right? So now he has a hard time getting up. What I really wanted to do was free this hand up so I could attack. So now I lift this hand up either by the wrist or the elbow. It doesn't take a lot of strength. And I just cup this elbow. So now he has no hands. Now I have a free hand to attack. This is what I was saying earlier, that you potentially could pull this in to go into a Doris and lay it down. But we're not going to go that one right now. So I've taken command of all four locations, free my hand up. So now we're going to take his neck. And that's where we were going through the, through the guillotine. And this can play out for you all different ways. It, I went through this whole other cycle of coming here because a lot of people will, they'll view a move and if it, that move isn't in the pattern that enters it, they don't realize it's the same freaking move. So if you were in side control and the guy was coming, you could do this move over and over. It doesn't have to be from here, right? And then for some reason, if the pattern doesn't enter the same way, they'll go, the move wasn't there. I mean, dude, that's the same exact move, just a different entry. So now you're like this. And you just caught this hand. So as I lace this neckline, all I wanted to do is grab a chin strap. Okay, so there's no danger. My hand's always going to be on this side. So we're going to take this. We're going to describe right now how this is going to go down. As I lace this neck, there's no way you can tell me you couldn't grab onto his chin. There's no impediment coming from the top side. His hands are here. His, his physical hands are here. His elbows are here. There's nothing protecting that neck. So that's what I'm going for. As I lace this neck, I backstep and I drop. On this arm so that the bicep attaches to the ear so that I start to get compression of that bottom artery right there. Understand, there's nothing he can do about this. Okay, it'll determine how he decides how this goes down and how much resistance he gives me on this arm. He can pull it back, but then he gives me the guillotine. He can allow me to pull it forward and keep snapping him, but that's what I want. He'll make the choice on how aggressive he does to pull his arm back. So when I back step, this hand comes right to the elbow. Do not let me see it back up. My head position behind here is only to make a wedge because later on, I got to flip my hands a little bit. So when you were here like this, this is where you were, you laced the skull, you grabbed onto his neck, I backstep. Aiken is coming up, look where my hand is. He's pulling out this elbow so he's head and arm down. Now you'll start to understand. I'm, I'm sorry about this kid. <laughs> so I'm like this. The reason my ear is here is I want to be able to hold this hand, hold this position with my head and this chin strap so that I can move with my hands. Right now, I was pulling at his elbow, making him go face down. Now I've latched up my hands together where I have the head and arm together. So I start driving this underneath because at this point, I'm going to roll him or I'm going to sit back and take the guillotine with a head and arm. But right now, we're just going to say that I roll it. As I start rolling, I'm going to ask you not to put your hips on the mat. There is absolutely no reason why I should see this, where your hips lay on the mat. 
if you understand the mechanics of the move, we're going to roll this way. So this back leg should be on, this foot should be on the mat as it sits through. So that it gives me generating force to go this way. As we're here, pay attention to this foot. As we're laying through, once I'm here, this, this foot, the one that I'm tapping, not the one that I'm lifting, is pushing this way. So I have a lot of generating force. I don't care if you tell me, Mike, that's only 20 pounds that you generate. Dude, 20 pounds to me is the world, man. That's like the difference sometimes with you bringing over the guy that's 220 or you couldn't get him over. That, every little thing matters in BJJ. If it doesn't, then you're like, you're just going to be average. That's what you want to be. Okay, I get it. You're like this. You're driving underneath me. I eat them underneath. So I'm like this. My, feet, my hips aren't on the ground. I'm driving over. As we are falling, your first reaction is to suck his, the back of his head to your belly. So as we land on this side, I don't do this. Okay, I suck it down so that it's inside my belly line because I need to make a transfer of these hands again. So my goal is to take the back of his head and put it as deep into my stomach pocket as possible. That allows me to have really good angle to take this and capture this elbow so that I can start uh, changing up these hands and now finish this off with a tight squeeze. One more time, really quick. I'm here. I drag, I drop, I shoot long, I pull. I'm reaching, reaching, he's resetting, I flip my grip. I'm up and over, I pull, I'm landing. We made one rotation, I go super low so he can't keep driving or come to turtle. At any point if he comes to turtle, I could take that thing early. I look for this bottom hand, you're stuck in a pin, I don't mind you going back that way. I don't mind you turning away, you should have been fighting to come to turtle. I grip this elbow, I latch it up, now your hands are out of the equation. I'm looking just like this. I'm looking to lace the neck and drop this knee in one shot. As I drop the knee, I grab onto that chin strap. He's got a choice. If he comes up, I take this arm out. If he doesn't, I come back and guillotine him. He's coming up, I'm pulling up. I drop it, right? My head is a physical wedge at this point. He can't get that arm back. I'm on a chin strap. I'm able to switch my hand grip. As, yeah, I know. Sorry about that, kiddo. As I'm switching the hand grip, I'm starting to take this lever right here and drive it underneath so we make the roll. Upon the roll, your hips do not touch the ground. Understand the mechanics of the far side leg and why I don't want to hit the ground because I want generating force to drive it over. Upon when we're flipping, we're both looking at the ceiling. I'm sucking the back of his head to the lowest portion of my belly line as deep as I can because I want to capture this arm later. So when you're driving this portion underneath, I told you no hips on the ground. I drive it underneath so that I can keep the rotation going. That's why I'm driving. I pull it down as deep into my belly line as possible. Allows me to capture the elbow and switch my hands to start finishing. Let's partner up. The sense of where your hand positions are, everything. Let's turn it this way so that we can record. When you first came like this, you were pulling this out. Like my only goal is to push this meat and skin up into this artery right here. Because the other side, when I start turning, the other side blade is just going to get tighter on the other side. There's nothing you can do about it, right? So when you're going and all the things I told you, right, don't leave your hands low. So I see some people with their hands down here and trying to roll over and like, that's not what I wanted to do. So if I go into that roll, what's going to happen is a lot of times your bicep's going to push into his cheekbone and all that stuff. So uncomfortable. But that's not what's putting him to sleep. It's this bone and flesh coming up. So when I first was pulling, my hands locked up, but my hands come as high up as possible. Now look where my hand is. It's literally behind that crease. So the, don't go over. So the moment I lay down, this will tell you, you're about to go to sleep, dude. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like it just is so tight. Like the moment I just lay down, I haven't even started the rest of it yet. So when your hand positions are there, you can always readjust them, right? So once they're here, like this, sorry, yeah, if your neck's okay. My hands are down here, and I'm, not, I'm wrong, right? Because really, how am I, my hands are sitting behind the tricep line when this is what I wanted to push up into this artery because the other arteries are given. And I don't need a lot on this side because 
if I've hit my chin strap correctly from the beginning, I was underneath the throat line sitting on the blade of that artery. So now when I go lay down, this guy's already going, oh shit, let me just jump over. That's why I'm emphasizing at the end to maybe sure, make sure you suck that belly down because I do have to switch my grips and I, I need something that doesn't allow this arm to move on me. So that's why I cover the elbow. So let's do it again. And your partner should almost feel like, man, I got to roll. Otherwise, I'll fall asleep right now. So pay attention to where this is. This shouldn't be sitting here. shouldn't be sitting here. It should be sitting at this crease over here. So when I lay down mechanically, this guy's already a, a wet like lasso latched on that artery. And now I'm coming underneath because as I rotate, I'm, trying to, I'm pushing this whole thing up into that artery. And it's lights out before we ever get to the other side if you don't roll. And it usually lights out anyway. So let's do it one more time. Let's roll. Okay. Make sense? You think you're in the same arm drag, but you're not, right? You push this hand down when you went, and now this hand's stuck in the middle, right? And he's trying like crazy. This is different than this. When I first pushed it down, I shot it. It's on this side, and he's resetting the skull. So I told you why, Wes, draw this, make this turn, and then we went into variations on this. So... Those are different things, but you got to get, that's why sometimes I'm so critical about the younger guys. Feel the move, feel the move, be hyper aware of every limb, every position, what's happening, the angle, like, that's the beauty of the sport. So, you know, it looks like barbaric, but it's so freaking complex, it's like an endless puzzle. Uh, you got a two minute break, and then we'll start rocking and rolling, let's do it. Guys.